Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today's story is targeted MSP attacks. Now, before I jump in, I have to confront the elephant in the room, which is I've been gone for a long time. I haven't posted a video in well over a month. For my regular viewers, I apologize for that if you're looking for them. It started as a big uh, stint of travel that happened all at the same time, but then it turned into a small little sabbatical where I uh, caught up with some other CTO tasks I had to do. In any case, I'm back now and I'm trying to post more regular videos, at least two or three every week, so you should see me keep up with those in the next few months. In any case, the story I'm coming back to is a big one, especially for any managed service providers or managed security service providers out there, otherwise known as MSPs or MSSPs. Now, if you are MSP, you probably know exactly what that is, but for any viewers who aren't, just know these are kind of IT service providers that allow small to medium businesses to outsource their IT services or needs to a third party, this MSP. They'll set up your network, they'll manage and monitor it, they might even do your help desk depending on what level of MSP they are. A managed security service provider is essentially the same type of thing, an outsource IT provider, but it's one who specializes and focuses on security only. So they may not manage all of your IT, but they may set up and monitor your security. In any case, if you are an MSP, you definitely want to worry about this story. Late June, around June 20th, we learned that a number of MSPs had been breached and their infrastructure was used to deliver ransomware not only to some of their computers, but to all of their customers as well. So it's a pretty big deal. If you're a managed service provider, you do not want to be the avenue to infect your customers. Before I fully jump into this new attack, I do want to share a tiny bit of history. Do know this is not the first example of MSP targeted attacks we've seen. Way back in October, of last year, the government via US CERT in the NCCIC warned the world that they were seeing MSP targeted attacks. At the time, they weren't very detailed on, on what was happening, but they did share that sophisticated threat actors were targeting MSPs and using things like PowerShell techniques to deliver uh, malware or to infect networks. However, they did quickly mention why threat actors might target MSPs, which should be pretty obvious. An MSP is a juicy target because it exposes the attacker to all the MSP's customers as well. It's kind of a supply chain or chain of trust attack. If I can hijack an MSP, I now can access all the customers that that particular MSP services, which can include financial organizations, retailers, healthcare, critical infrastructure, manufacturing, a lot of very juicy targets. So in any case, the US CERT warned about that in October, and shortly after, in February, of this year, we saw a very targeted attack affect at least four MSPs that admitted that they were victims of it. This particular attack went after a, a specific vulnerability in a well-used MSP tool. Just for some background, MSPs often use tools like Remote Monitoring and Management Systems, or RMMs, Professional Service Automation Systems, or PSAs, and other central management tools to help them manage and control all the network network devices and endpoint devices that they manage at different customer sites. In the February attack, the bad guys were targeting a vulnerability from 2017 in a ConnectWise plugin called Managed IT Sync, which is part of the Kaseya VSA RMM. And basically, this vulnerability allowed the bad guy unauthenticated access to inject SQL commands into the Kaseya VSA. And that basically allows the attacker to launch any commands they want in the Kaseya VSA. And in that case, the attackers used their access to force ransomware, specifically an old variant called GANCRAB, onto all the managed computers that they could access through the Kaseya VSA. It was a pretty big deal for some of the MSPs that were affected. Uh, in some cases, over 2,000 different endpoints were compromised, costing quite a bit of money to recover. Now that you have that history, let's talk about the more recent MSP attack. Late June, specifically on June 20th, stories started coming out about MSPs who were hijacked and used to deliver ransomware to customers. In fact, we know of at least one of our partners who fell victim to this attack, and they actually shared some of the scripts and malware used during the attack. 
Now, unlike the previous February attack, there does not seem to be a common root cause, like a vulnerability in a particular system. Remember, the February attack was due to a specific ConnectWise plugin flaw, but this time there does not seem to be a common vulnerability that bad guys are using to get into these networks. However, there are a lot of commonalities in these attacks. First of all, these bad guys do seem to be targeting RDP, or the Remote Desktop Protocol. You probably know this is a network protocol in Windows that allows you to remotely manage computers, basically take them over, control their cursor, and do whatever you need to to manage the desktop remotely. In any case, it seems these bad guys are targeting any exposed RDP services. We don't know exactly how they're using that, but it could be, say, one of two things. Uh, one, they could just try to brute force login. You know, by trying a bunch of different common uh, logins and passwords, they might get lucky. And if they do, they'll have a credential to log into your systems and start more attacks. The other option is to exploit a vulnerability. And know that just a month ago, Microsoft patched a very critical vulnerability called the Blue Keep vulnerability. Long story short, an unauthenticated attacker could gain full control of your RDP a server or desktop using this vulnerability. So in any case, they seem to be targeting RDP. The second commonality is whatever their initial infection vector is, they then go after privileged credentials. They might use a number of tools to do this. Once you have access to at least one system on a private network, you can sniff credentials using a lot of different tools. For instance, you might use Mimikatz to grab them over the network or from the local host or even from memory. So once they get on one of these computers, they use other types of local attacks to gain some of the MSP's privileged credentials. And here's where the ironic thing comes in. Once they have one of your privileged credentials, they actually use your legitimate MSP tools to deliver malware. I mentioned remote management and monitoring services like RMMs or PSA tools or central management tools. Well, in all cases, if the bad guy can get one of your MSP credentials, they might be able to log into one of those central management systems and then use those systems to directly control uh, endpoints and network devices. In this attack, they seem to commonly exploit the web root management console. And basically, once they can log into it, they can use that console to deliver commands directly to all your managed endpoints. Now, it's important to note that your RMM tools or the web root console or these tools don't actually have any vulnerabilities in them. The bad guys are simply taking advantage of a stolen credential. So in the attack we analyzed, these bad guys seem to specifically be using the web root management console. Once they have access to that through a credential, they send a PowerShell script to every endpoint under management. Long story short, that PowerShell script goes to a pastebin page to download an additional bit of PowerShell. That additional PowerShell is actually a well-known uh, uh, function from a common PowerShell framework called Powersploit. And it's a function that allows an attacker to reflectively inject an executable or DLL directly into a process. And embedded in that same PowerShell script was the Sodino Key B ransomware. So long story short, they're using a Powersploit function to basically load Sodino Kibi directly into the memory of all the computers that you have under management. Now, if you want more technical detail on this attack, I have a long write-up, a technical write-up on our Secplicity blog post, which I'll put in the link section associated with this video. In any case, it is a huge deal for MSPs. So what can you do? Well, remember, there is no security silver bullet. You have to have layered security. These particular threat actors are pretty sophisticated. They're using a number of evasive techniques to get past legacy security controls. For instance, the use of PowerShell to stage their payload and even embed it in an additional bit of script might help it evade certain types of security controls. The fact that they're using PowerSploit to directly load this into your memory rather than running it in a file might also allow it to evade more file-centric antivirus solutions as well. So you need to use a number of different layers of security to catch this type of evasion. That said, there are some key security defenses that help. Number one, and really the most important, is multi-factor authentication, or MFA. The big commonality here is these attackers are gaining access to your privileged credentials and then using those privileged credentials to log in as you.
If you implement multi-factor authentication, they wouldn't be able to do that. Even if they stole the actual password that you used, they would need other tokens to actually authenticate and log into your RMM or your PSA tool. So really, implementing MFA should be the number one priority of all MSPs out there. By the way, WatchGuard makes a great solution that can help you deploy multi-factor throughout your enterprise called AuthPoint. So anyways, implement MFA, even if you don't have an enterprise-wide MFA solution. I believe Kaseya VSA, WebRoots Management Console, and many of these products have some sort of MFA that you can enable. The second thing you want to do is limit public access to important network management services. So things like RDP or the ports necessary for your RMM or PSA tool. Yes, as an MSP, you do need to offer some sort of access to those particular protocols in order for you and your techs to remotely manage customer systems. However, you should follow the principle of least privilege and limit access to those protocols by certain IPs or by your usernames, which are all things you can do with your Firebox if you happen to use that. Even more importantly, why not use VPN? You don't have to expose any of these services publicly at all if you set up mobile user or branch office VPN. Then you can access the private service directly without exposing them on the internet. Finally, make sure you have a suite of advanced malware detection services. Signature-based AV is not very good anymore. Neither is file-centric antivirus. You do keep it around to catch some of the basic stuff, but you need more advanced anti-malware services to catch some of this file-less, more evasive of malware. Uh, one of the products we have is something called Threat Detection and Response. It's, it's very similar to something called the Endpoint Detection and Response Solution, and it can often detect malware that has actually gotten onto an endpoint when that malware runs. So it adds an additional layer of protection that might have stopped things like the Sodi no Kibi ransomware. In any case, as I mentioned, this is a critical story for MSPs. If you're out there, the main takeaway here is to realize you are targeted right now. Bad guys realize that you're a great avenue to get into your customer's network, so that means you have to follow better security practices than the average Joe. Uh, be sure to check out our blog post about this to learn more as it has more detailed takeaways. And that's it for today's story. Thank you for watching.